Hey guys, this is Mr. Geist for Algebra Unit 2.3 Notes. Today we're going to be talking about graphing linear functions by using a table of values. Our learning target today is to be able to graph a linear function using a table of domain range values. So, one, it tells us to complete the table of values by substituting the given value into the function. Plot each ordered pair the point on the graph in order to form a, what's it say? Oh, it's going to form a straight line. Okay. Um, make sure your line is perfectly straight and that it has arrows on both ends. Okay. So it means we got to use the straight edge. And if whatever we make, whatever we're like create, if it's not a perfectly straight line, uh, we did something wrong. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So remember our x values are our domain, our y values, okay, those are the range. That's what we call the f of x. So for number one, they give us dx. So there's say, hey, plug in negative one, see what you get. Okay, well, I know that two times negative one is negative two. And then I still have negative 5. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So f at negative 1 is negative 7. Okay? And I don't know if you want to just go right away, go negative 1, negative 7, and boom, plot your point. Now, the next one, they told us that f of x is negative 3. So that means negative 3 equals the 2x minus 5. So rem remember, domain, we simplify for the range when they give us the f of x, that's when we solve. Okay, so I need to solve for x, which means I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And we divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we get 1 comma negative 3. So I go to 1, negative 3, plot my point. OK, for number 3, they tell us the domain. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to go f of 3 equals 2 parentheses 3 minus 5, and I'm going to plug in 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 5 is 1. So f of 3 equals 1. So I'm going to go to 3, go up to 1, and there's my point. Okay, for the next one, they gave us the domain. Okay, so that's where we simplify. So f of 5 equals 2 times 5 minus 5. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 minus 5 is 5. So f of 5 equals 5. I go to 5, 5. So, yeah, so far everything looks like it's going to be in a straight line. And now my last one, they told me the range, so I'm going to have to solve this. So 9 equals 2x minus 5. And to solve, I'm going to add 5 to both sides because I'm following SADMAP. 14 equals 2x. And to get the x by itself, we need to divide by 2. So we get 7 equals x. OK? So I'm going to go to the point uh, 5, 6, 7, 9. OK. So now the next step is that we need to draw the line. OK? So it's got to be perfectly straight. We're going to use a straight edge. Up. That is not perfectly straight, Mr. Grice. 
Okay, I'm lining it up with my ruler. There we go. And I'm going to add my arrows to both sides. And I'm done. Okay, and you can see just kind of throughout here that we have our one, two, three, four, five. Our five answers right there. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing as that we just did. Remember with domain, when we got to find our domain, we are simplifying. And when they give us a range, we have to solve. Okay. So this time our function is g of x. So g of negative 1 equals negative 3 times 1 plus 6. Okay. So I'm plugging in negative 1. And now we simplify. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. And 3 plus 6 equals 9. So g of negative 1 equals 9. OK, now in the next one we have to solve. They told me that 6 equals negative 3x plus 6. OK, well to solve I'm going to subtract 6 to both sides. 6 minus 6 is 0. And then 0 divided by negative 3 to get the x by itself is 0. Oh, sorry, I forgot to start plotting my points. So I got negative 1, positive 9, 0, 6. And the next one they told us the domain is Two. So we are going to plug in g of 2 and see what it equals. Well, let's see that negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So g of 2 equals 0. So when I go to 2, I get 0. OK. Oops, sorry. I forgot to go right here. 0. All right, next one they're telling me that the range is negative 6. So negative 6 equals, that's where our function is, negative 3x plus 6. OK, we're solving. So we're going to subtract 6 to both sides. And we get negative 12 equals negative 3x. We've just got to watch our signs there. Divide by negative 3. And negative 12 divided by negative 3 is 4. So at 4, we go down to negative 6. OK. Now that last one, I'm going to let you do that on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. Good luck. OK, so you should have gotten your final answer of negative 9. So I go to 5, negative 9, and there we go. And now the last step is to draw our line. OK, so make sure you have your ruler. This does make a straight line. There we go. And then we got to make sure that it has arrows on both ends. Now that last one looks kind of weird. There we go. That looks a little better. OK, go ahead and flip it over. So on the back, guess what? Yeah, we're doing the same thing, except now we're going to have some fractions. OK? Don't be scared. All right, so domain. We simplify. So h of 12 equals negative 1 half times negative 12 minus 4. And we're going to plug in negative 12. I think we can do multiply half in our head because half of 12 is 6. Negative times negative is a positive. 
So then we have six minus four, which is two. So when we plug in, did I do something wrong here? Hold on. Nope, I'm just freaking out over here. Okay, so when I plug in negative 12, I should get two. But does my graph go all the way to negative 12? No, well, it, you could imagine that it's going to be up here and be like, well, there's my point. But, you know, that one kind of goes off the graph, so you don't have to worry about it. So the next one, they tell us one. And when they tell us one, we have to solve it. OK, so as we're solving, we're going to add four to both sides. One plus four is five. And now to solve, I need to multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 2 over 1. And negative 2 over 1 is negative 2. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And so I can go to my point, negative 10, positive 1. All right. Oh, they're making a solve again. Yeah, because they told us, yeah, they said negative 1. That's where the h of x is. OK, so same thing. Can I add 4 to both sides? Negative 1 plus 4, we get 3, equals negative 1 half x. So we multiply by the reciprocal again, blah, 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 reciprocal. Negative 2 over 1 is just 2, and negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So I'm going to go to the point, negative 6, negative 1. OK. We have two more points. Both of those are domains, OK, which means they tell you the x. So it would be h h of 0 equals negative 1 half times 0 minus 4. And the other one would be h of 6 equals negative 1 half times uh, 6 minus 4. So let's see if you guys can do those two and see what you get. Go ahead and pause the video. And good luck. OK, so you should have gotten negative 4 and negative 7. So I'm going to go over here. I have 0, negative 4. And then I have 6, negative 7. OK. Yep, time to connect the dots. Boom, boom, boom. Connect the dots. La, la, la. There we go. Perfectly straight line, and we added our arrows. Miss Carranza would be so happy with us. All right. What do you think? You want to do it all on your own? No? Okay, we'll do a couple. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'll do h of negative 3 equals 2 thirds um, times negative 3 minus 7. We'll do that one. Okay, so remember, if you're not comfortable, use your calculator. Okay. Um, I think 2 thirds times negative 3 is one that you can do in your head, okay? But here we go. We put it in the calculator, 2 divided by 3, and we're timesing it by negative 3, and we get negative 2. So I have negative 2 minus 7, which gives us negative 9. So h of negative 3 equals negative 9. So negative 3, negative 9. Okay, now that next one, 
h of 0 equals 2 thirds times 0 minus 7. You can do that one on your own. Okay? But let's set up um, our next one. So this is where they tell us what k of x is. So remember, that's when we solve. So I have negative 5 equals 2 thirds x minus 7, and we're going to solve. So when I'm solving, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 7 is going to be a positive 2. And to get the variable by itself, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? And once again, if you have trouble with that, it's 3 divided by 2 because it's the reciprocal now. And we're times in it by 2. And we get our answer of 3. So 3 equals x. And that was for this guy right here. Okay? So I'm going to go to 3, negative 5, and there we go. Okay? Now, um, that next one to set up, it would be for negative 3. Remember that we're solving on that one. So 2 thirds x minus 7. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is you're going to finish those three. I'm not even going to tell you how to do that negative one. Okay, you're going to need to figure that one out for yourself. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, and then when you're done, everything should be graphed. Good luck. Okay, so there are all of my points, and I am drawing my line right now. There we go. Okay, so you should have gotten uh, h of 0 was negative 7. Uh, when our y was negative 3, we should have gotten x equals 6, and that last one was 9. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Carranza or myself. You know we would love to help you out. Uh, your homework is 2.3 practice, looking at it. It's just a mixture of everything that we've been learning. Okay? So if you have any questions, come find us. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grice signing off. Thanks for watching.